Hello, this is Harry Forbes from ARC Advisory Group. This webcast will report on a session at the recent 2020 ARC Industry Forum in Orlando. The session was focused on open process automation, the status of projects conducted by major end user firms. The presenters at this session were ExxonMobil, Evonik, and Aramco. First, David DeBerry of ExxonMobil presented the ExxonMobil prototype project and testbed systems using the open process automation standard from the open group. Second, Igor Stoles of Evonik presented three use cases that Evonik had developed for the MTP or module type package. Finally, Aramco presented a status update on their use of the Open Group's open process automation specifications. First, let's turn to ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil has conducted three major programs for open process automation. The first was a proof of concept conducted and completed in 2018. This was reported at the ARC forum two years ago. The second is a prototype project, which was reported this year at the ARC forum. This involved both Lockheed Martin and Wood Group as system integrators, a different set of suppliers, and instead of working with a simulated process, worked with an actual process, albeit at a pilot plant scale. The third program, which is was also reported, is still in, in preparation, and that is a testbed system being developed in Texas by Yokogawa as system, administ as system integrator. The ExxonMobil proof of concept system was used as a, di a set of suppliers just to prove out the concepts of open process automation and experiment with that. The pilot project or the prototype automation system is shown in these photographs from ExxonMobil is a pilot plant for catalyst evaluation. And this plant is now running using a system developed and integrated by Lockheed Martin and Wood Group. And it's running for several months in a pilot plant laboratory in ExxonMobil research facilities in New Jersey with a human operator at actual process conditions and temperatures and pressures. ExxonMobil also reported on their testbed system, which they're developing in Texas, and plan to use this to expand the number of products and technologies that they can use in open process automation, and reported that they have added to the set of collaboration partners who will be working with ExxonMobil to test this technology in field trials going forward. In terms of learnings, ExxonMobil noted that one of their issues was the need to approach the what they called the systemness of a proprietary DCS, meaning the integration of various engineering software tools and system management capabilities and historical data capabilities to to develop a unified uh, in interface for the human being and situational awareness. This may have brought a smile to the DCS suppliers faces because obviously they have worked for many years over many generations of product to build this behavior and look and feel into their DCS products. ExxonMobil outlined some areas for future work in the testbed system. Um, I, they want to obviously include uh, mobility and additional suppliers for various types of equipment. I think one personally, one piece of technology that they will find very useful is the use of software containers and container orchestration. Now let's turn to Evonik. Evonik outlined three different MTP use cases that they had developed with different suppliers. Two were developed in Marl, Germany, and the third, the most recent one, in Singapore, 
where they integrated a package unit with an existing DCS. Ivanik explained that the concept of unit modularization is very important from their strategy standpoint in that they have a goal to reduce the time to produce a new product by at least 50%. And in order to do this, the modularization of the process technology and the unit design and the automation systems is very important and is necessary to reduce this time to production for new products. So modularization of the plant and the process and the automation is strategic for companies like Evonik in terms of reducing their lead time to produce new products. MTP is a standardized description of an automation system, which is part of this modular production concept. MTP enables the discovery and description of the automation capabilities of a modular unit so that they can be integrated into a higher level system very quickly and accurately at the orchestration layer. The three programs that they described, or three use cases that they described, were an early orchestration of a modular plant in a laboratory environment. And this was developed in the past with Vago being the automation supplier and ABB being the process orchestration layer. The second use case was to use an industrial Internet of Things platform as an orchestration layer. And again, they switched out, if you will, the automation supplier. So they developed the modular unit with Phoenix Contact as the automation supplier and with ThingWorks, uh, using ThingWorks from PTC as the orchestration layer. Finally, the third use case was, if you will, more of a real world use case at present. It involved the integration of a package unit or a skid mounted system, as we might call it in the United States, with an existing DCS. And this was done by developing the export, MTP export capability from the package unit to integrate very rapidly and accurately with an existing Yokogawa DCS. Ivanik also pointed out the existing cooperation agreement between Namur, the European end user organization that's developing MTP specifications, and the Open Process Automation Forum, a forum of the Open Group, which is developing the specifications for open process automation. In these areas, the objective is to take a MTP automation layer and be able to abstract that as a distributed control node or control node in an open process automation system and also to be able to integrate the orchestration layer with the Open Group's Open Process Automation Advanced Computing Platform specifications. Finally, we had an update from Aramco, a very brief update in which they noted that their path to adoption for open process automation technology is similar to ExxonMobil. And they are developing a testbed in 2020, as is ExxonMobil. Aramco reported that their schedules have been delayed for reasons of the recent Aramco uh, uh, IPO and also the acquisition and integration of the SABIC, the state-owned Saudi chemical company, with Aramco. Both of these obviously have been major disturbances to Aramco and, and require significant integration. And they reported that their goals for uh, 2025 are so aggressive that it is causing their human resources to be overcommitted. And this has resulted in some delays in their open process automation program, which I, in my opinion, a couple of years ago, may have been ahead of ExxonMobil's. The present status of the program, they reported, was that they are working in Kingdom to do this with in Kingdom and international vendors. But again, as I said, they're overcommitted in terms of human resources because of the need to manage programs for the uh, 
public operation, more public operation of Aramco in the integration of SABIC. They also need to do these pilot programs and field trials in Kingdom, obviously. So they need to develop them with the contracting and procurement requirements that are germane to operating in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. ARC's notes on this session uh, were, were these. First of all, both Mobile, ExxonMobil and Evonik seem to be very keen to employ multiple suppliers at different phases of these programs and get a large group of suppliers involved. Second note that they are, are cooperating that these technologies, while not at all identical, are somewhat complementary and these organizations, the Open Group and the Moore, are working to coordinate their efforts. Ivonic reported that MTP is on a path now towards official standardization by the IEC. And both firms invited other end users who value these developments to invest by joining one or two of these groups and participating in the standards development process and potentially participating in future pilot programs and field trials. More details will be available on this session on the ARC Advisory Group YouTube channel. The session recording is being processed now and will be made available to those who attended the ARC Orlando Forum shortly. Later in the year, the entire session video will be made available to the public on the ARC Advisory Group YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching this webcast. And if you do have some questions or would like to discuss this topic further, please feel free to contact me personally or visit the ArcWeb website. Again, thank you very much. This is Harry Forbes. Have a good day.